Let's talk about strategy when it comes to your iOS developer portfolio and specifically deep projects versus shallow projects and why I think a bunch of shallow projects is the way to go for most junior iOS developers. But don't get me wrong, as with anything in programming, there is no one right answer all the time. Both of these strategies can work. I just think the shallow strategy has a higher probability of success. Again, for the junior iOS developer. Before we dive in, let me first say this, is that having a portfolio at all is only helpful typically for certain types of jobs. And that is small startups, contracting, freelancing, or mid-sized companies, you know, typically the very large companies, the fangs of the world, your portfolio doesn't really matter to them. I mean, it might help you like get the interview, but that's about it. But unless you graduated from a university with a great computer science program, you have awesome internships along the way, your early developer jobs are typically gonna be at those smaller startups, you know, mid-sized companies, maybe contracting, freelancing. Okay, so deep versus shallow. So a deep portfolio project would be a complete, robust, full app, on the App Store, it's production ready. You've handled all the edge cases, all the different screen sizes. It looks great in the landscape, right? You've gone deep and you've done all the dirty work. This is great, this is awesome. But here are two main reasons why I think this strategy is less likely to succeed than the shallow strategy. First, it's flat out hard to finish an app, get a production ready and put it on the App Store. You may have heard me talk about this in the past, the first 90% and the second 90%. Real quick recap, the first 90% is kind of what we'll do in this portfolio project. You build the basic functionality. It feels like the whole app is working. You're like, great, I'm almost done. I'm like 90% done. And then all the little stuff creeps in, which is the second 90%, which is all the error handling. Again, device sizes. Does it look good in landscape? Are you going to do any accessibility, dynamic type? There's all this little edge case stuff that on its own doesn't seem like a lot, but in aggregate, it adds up to a whole lot. And that's what we call it the second 90%. And to be blunt, the second 90% sucks. It's not fun. You built up all this momentum during the first 90%, you think you're done, and you get smacked in the face with the second 90%. And like I said, it's hard to finish a complete, robust app, production ready, get it on the app store. And as a new dev, you're gonna run into a lot of things you haven't ran into before. It's very easy to get discouraged and quit. Like you really lose your momentum trying to do that. And to be honest, many people quit at this stage. So like I said, it's not impossible. And if you can do it, it's a great skill to show off. I just think you're, you're playing the game on hard mode which again, if you're really good, you're determined, it's probably a good route to go. But for most people, I think shallow is the way to go. And the shallow strategy is when you build a bunch of smaller apps, like we're gonna build in this course with this HealthKit app, and you get to explore the Apple ecosystem and build a bunch of different projects, showcase a wide variety of skills. Like I said in the intro, maybe you build a map app with location, camera app with filters, AR kit. And the key thing here is it doesn't have to be like a unique idea, right? You're not shipping this on the app store. You're demonstrating your ability to build things. So it's perfectly okay to just copy a feature from an existing app. But the key to this strategy is to keep the project small and contained. And if you do that, there's two main reasons why I think this is the higher likelihood of success. The main one is that you keep your momentum going. Like I said earlier, it's hard to build that complete, finished, robust app. That second 90% slaps you in the face. You lose your momentum. Well, with these smaller projects, you keep up that momentum, right? You work on it for a week or two, knock it out, on to the next one, right? You're gaining new skills. You're learning new frameworks. And like I said, it's very important for us to know how to pick up a new Apple framework. You're exploring all the different kinds of things you can build on the iPhone. You're, you're putting in the reps, you're putting in the work, and that is going to make you better. And again, the whole point is to keep the project small enough so you can knock it out in a week or two, get that win, move on to the next one, get that win, move on to the next one. That momentum builds. And the second benefit is that you just have a better understanding of the iPhone ecosystem, right? Again, you've touched maps, you've touched cameras, you've touched AR kit, you've touched cloud kit. Sure, you may not be an expert in those, but you're just so much more aware, you have so much more general knowledge. And again, learning new Apple frameworks is a lot of what we do. And who knows, maybe one of your many portfolio projects that you've built, if you've done this, will be in the same genre as the company you're trying to get hired at. So both shallow and deep strategies can work. Again, the deep strategy is like playing on hard mode. It's great if you can pull it off, but I think the shallow strategy of building multiple small projects across the iOS ecosystem is the way to go for most junior developers. And in this course, that's exactly what we're gonna build. Gonna give you an example of what one of those projects looks like, and then you can replicate it however you like.